So, I have here four 50s to 60s typewriters. And, of course, they look different, but did you know that they all type differently? Um, of course, if you um, own these machines or collect typewriters, you would know that all of them do actually, generally, have a rather different typing feel. Different performance, different speed, of course, different sounds. So, have you ever wondered why these machines feel different? So, yeah, in the previous video, I covered the Torpedo 18B, and I referenced that I was going to show some simulations of these type actions. So, yeah, in that video I showed the bell cranks and the general layout. So, yeah, these are, that's just removing, lifting the ribbon covers, and that would reveal to you these bell cranks here. So basically, you have your key levers, and these pull down on these bell cranks. Um, yeah, there are. Yeah, so typically on these type, most typewriters, your key levers operate as what you call class two levers, where your effort is on this side, fulcrum's over here, and then the load is on the middle. In this case, pulling up. So, yeah, we have the bell cranks. Those change the direction of that downward motion to one pulling this direction, which then pulls on these type bar links, which finally pull on the bottom of these type bars. It's the exact same principle on all these machines. Yet, they all feel different. And one key observation is the fact that the shapes of these bell cranks, though similar, do in fact for like even, um, okay, I guess, yeah, you'll see a lot more variations on other machines, which I'll feature in future videos, but yeah, like, sometimes that pivot block that all of these key levers are attached to will be curved in this direction instead of, or vertically instead of horizontally, and so on. You can also see that the way these bell cranks are shaped differs between all these machines, as well as the location of this tip with respect to the type bars. So yeah, they're all different, and as a result, all these machines feel different, and I'd say that's very much part of the reason that I collect. The fact that all these machines present new and sometimes quite enlightening and eye-opening typing experiences. And indeed, precisely, it is the joy of discovering new machines and just how nice they are and unique they are that, of course, makes you come and want more typewriters. Okay, so here you should be able to see some simulations of type actions, which I've made in this game called Algodoo, which I used to play when I was young back in 2010, um, when it was more so called fun with a PH, or at least that was a free version, while Algodoo was originally um, a paid version with more advanced features. So now years later, I'm using this wonderful 2D simulation game, Rigid Body Physics, to simulate and predict force curves for these typewriters. So here we have, at least these four simulations are for those four machines I showed you earlier. So basically what I've done was I used some calipers and rulers to take some reasonable measurements down to a millimeter and plot these forms, at least to my best ability and interpretation. For example, this part of the type bar you can't really see very well without disassembling the machine. Um, plotted out the bell cranks and links in order to simulate these mechanisms. So here, this is where I will show you what's called a force curve. So force curve plots the force on your fingertip, which I'm representing with this weight here, and to it I have connected a constant force thruster, which will simulate a key press. So if I press the down key, um, you'll see that I'm producing a press, and though in this case it's being a bit unusually weak. Anyways, so if I were to slow down the simulation, you should be better able to see a graph get plotted. So here you can see that your force on this Olympia type action, 
at least later Olympias, starts off a bit of a plateau and slowly arcs downward. Um, so here I've plotted with respect to the um, the displacement of your finger on the key. And you can additionally plot it with respect to time instead, which should yield re similar results. Well, in this case, it will be plotted in the other direction, so let's change the scale. So now the keystroke starts over here instead of on this side. Falls, then rises near the end, generally due to the force contributed by the behind segment the inversal bar, which is what actuates the escapement on most of these machines and allows them to do so quite quickly, since the type bars can do said actuation under their own momentum. So you can see, again, key lever, which I had shown, um, your links, bell crank, which is basically a special lever, and then your type bar link, and finally the type bar. And given that, you get the exact same idea with other machines, except there are differences in the geometry. And these differences, so while they all achieve basically the exact same goal of bringing the type R slug upon the platen and paper at a sufficient speed to impart an impression, mm -hmm. these lead to rather different force curves as well as speed versus key displacement curves. So here on that console or Commodore, um, you actually start with a fairly quite constant force curve and then it slowly drops off. So it has a nice and pleasant full tactility, which then drops off near the end. Um, so yeah, these force curves are basically um, what caused me to try to investigate these force curves was originally my investigation of such as they are in mechanical keyboards, where for various switches and in order to compare their tactility or feel objectively, um, some individuals have actually uh, purchased some relatively expensive equipment to measure the forces with respect to the displacement of the keys. Um, right now I don't have set equipment, so the best I can do is simulate this in applications like this. So of course it won't be perfect, but it's pretty close, and even with small errors, or like in the angles and dimensions, you'll still get roughly the same shape and be able to make decent and reasonably accurate conclusions about how different typewriters feel. Likewise, for the Triumph Digital Perfect, um, it has quite a nice tactility um, with a force that drops off quickly. Now, of course, I wouldn't have been able to ascertain the actual shape of that force curve until I made this simulation. So you can see, it drops off almost linearly, which is quite interesting. Um, so that's what I associate with the Triumph Touch, and you'll actually get the same thing on earlier Adler portables, which were basically identical internally. And finally, we get to our wonderful Torpedo 18B. I mean, these are all nice machines, just different. Um, where you actually get a quite the most arced and hence, as I'd call, tactile touches. Um, basically, you only really get this kind of roundness with Alps SKC and Brown, as well as other switches, or technically even rubber dome switches. So now you can get an idea of why these different machines um, feel different and why it's worth experiencing multiple of them instead of just limiting yourself to only one typewriter. I mean, of course, if you have space constraints, then yeah, um, such is life, but yeah, there are very many different cool machines. Another thing to note is that when I received my Corona number 3 typewriter, that machine, despite being described as feeling rather clunky, is actually surprisingly pleasant and tactile, and actually has a fairly similar force curve to the Torpedo 18B. You can see 
pretty art. Um, used to be a bit more similar, or I guess, right, I forgot to increase the simulation speed, or frequency that is. So yeah, the Chrono number three being a rather early portable has much more different type action and simpler type action. Just a class one lever and this link here directly pushing. Don't mind this thing, I was trying to experiment. <laughs> then here, if you've been collecting typewriters, you would surely know about the Underwood number five, basically one of the most produced typewriters ever. Um, this machine, instead of using hinges or hooks rather on the links, uses um, what Will Davis called pin and slot bearings, and that produces a rather different force curve. So, like in this case, the prediction and a bit of the observation is indeed, maybe depending on the minor geometry differences between various variations of the separator action. For example, um, Germany um, and even Sweden produced their own typewriters, which basically were copies of this type action. I think even the American Woodstock basically has the exact same style. Um, but small variations in the geometry of this whole setup do in fact cause it for those machines to feel quite different and hence be worth collecting. So yeah, when you touch or press a key on those machines, you do or should um, possibly feel a slight dip and then finally a tactile bump near the end or after the halfway point. That leads to a unique touch and tactility, uh, which at least for the Underwood number six um, can indeed allow you to actually achieve quite fast speeds with enough practice. So like here you can see, unlike on those other machines where it was more arced, you get a point where your finger is actually, um, well, technically at a constant speed that's not really positioned with respect to time, but yeah, that affects the tactility. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely do a more in-depth coverage of these various type actions later on, but I guess I could go ahead and show some more. Um, for example, recently I received a Torpedo 12, which I'll feature in another video. Um, that's an example from the lineage of geared type actions. So those started off with the Remington Model 1 portable. Um, and yeah, this machine should basically have roughly the same type action style. Where you have a sector gear and then a gear on the type art itself. That leads to a unique an alternative method where you have a much larger arc and it turns out that from my own experience with typing on this machine that it actually does have a somewhat similar tactility though well, in this case actually more drawn out but yeah i can see how even the later um, torpedoes by like around 30 years of separation do still maintain the same character of their predecessors such as this torpedo 12. And finally, we also have other examples of, uh, for example, recently, my Monarch typewriter, Fox typewriter, different force curves, nice and smooth arc, though I found that the Fox standard does feel matters heavier, at least inertially. So yeah, these are two variations of that roughly the same type action style. So here, fixed pin, then pin and slot, then you have a rivet, that's on the Monarch design, whereas the Fox is basically the same thing, but flipped, where you have a fixed pivot for your bell cranks and pin and slot to connect it to the key lever. But they technically should, at least in theory, produce the same force curve. And you have to see that in speed. That idea 
Yeah, bad idea. And this is from my best interpretation of the LC Smith, which I have yet to acquire. Pretty interesting and unique method of delivering your key motion to just standard class one lever, which finally pulls from above in similar fashion. These are the guys. Then we have a visigraph, which is based on, at least I based this simulation on Willa Davis's videos covering the machine as well as his article. And interestingly enough, this is basically like your portable typewriters, but flipped around so that it pulls from above instead of from below. And somewhat expectedly, you actually do get a force curve similar to the Olympia SM4, or just general Olympia typewriters. That's pretty cool. And finally, the earlier Remington number 10, um, which is, I'd say is actually, in fact, a nice and early example of this style of type action, which you already saw with those portables, except that, um, yeah, your type basket is raised a lot higher, and your type bars start fully horizontal. And interestingly enough, it turns out that this layout is predicted to feel quite similar to the Triumph Perfect, but with an even more, or straighter, and more linear, negative linear force curve. And I'd say that's actually kind of true, other than the contribution of, like, what these simulations don't really account for is um, how, at least for these machines, older machines, you typically have the universal bar implemented as um, either wood or metal bar, um, that is hangs below the type bar or the type le the key levers and that contributes a certain amount of spring force um, depending on at least how yeah, how heavy that spring is and also how late that bar gets hit and that would affect the touch but otherwise I actually would agree from the simulations that there is some resemblance between the feel of my Remington number no. 10 and my Triumph action machines just that it is a bit heavier and the triumph action does expectedly have a slightly sharper drop in force from that start. Also, here's a rough simulation of the Adler Privat typewriter um, that I made. Um, in this case, I don't actually have one yet, though I have one in the, on the way. Um, so basically just using a video as reference where I was able to see the type action slightly. Um, I at least ascertained that I could repurpose my Torpedo 18 simulation and instead connect it with this horizontal link, which I saw in the videos and also some photos. Um, so given that, interestingly, it turns out that you do in fact um, somewhat expectedly get a similar force curve to the Triumph Perfect, um, given that Adler and Triumph basically share this type of action in their earlier machines until some later uh, redesign, um, like with my Adler Gabriel 25, which I have yet to make a simulation of. Yeah, that machine has a quite different touch and feel. Still quite nice, despite being late and having a, a plastic shell. But yeah, it seems pretty interesting that maybe with this Adler Privat, Adler was basically trying to come up with their own design um, while still maintaining the same force curve or ty typing feel as the Triumph Perfect, though um, both by prediction from this force curve and somewhat from anecdotal evidence from fellows on the typewriter discord. Um, indeed, you would expect then that the Adler Privat would have a slightly sharper tactility um, since with this force curve you do get a steeper drop in force and a bit more concave, whereas on the Triumph Perfect, it's a bit shallower.
though again could be just errors in the fact that I can't really control the vertical scale of this graph in this game. Um, but yeah, you can expect them to feel pretty similar, despite being quite different implementations. So, yep, that's an overview of these various type actions and why different typewriters feel different. Alright, so if you found that all interesting and would like to learn more about typewriters, feel free to like and subscribe.